All right, what's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Now today we're going to do something a little bit new. Now in my normal day job, I am I work in cybersecurity and this is something that um, not only we can practice our coding skills on, but it's actually kind of interesting to see how it works. And it is, uh, you know, one of the things that hackers actually use. Now you might wonder what I'm talking about and what it is is a key logger. So what this does is it kind of just sits in the background and it just logs all your keys. So like if you type in anything on your keyboard, um, spaces or characters or numbers it wants to capture all of that and put it into a little file and you know sometimes it even gets a little advanced like uh, you know this file might be emailed or sent somewhere after a certain time period to the hacker that way they can you know maybe they just read your search results in Google or some random stuff but a lot of times you log into uh, web pages and that is ways that they can get your credentials so I wouldn't recommend using this in the real world please don't be a bad guy but for um, learning purposes, it would be cool to code it, and that's what we're going to do today. So let's go ahead and open up our favorite text editor of choice, and mine is Visual Studio Code. And we're gonna make a new file. We're gonna call it keylogger.py. Now that we have keylogger in here, we need to do one thing right off the bat. We're going to import a module. This module is called pi input, and we're going to say import keyboard. So PyInput's a nice little library and it includes this little keyboard module which we can use to capture um, key events from the user. Now one thing to note is obviously you'll have to install this um, ahead of time, otherwise you'll have a little squiggly line and when you run it, it'll be like, I don't know what you're talking about. What is PyInput? And you could do that by saying like pi-m um, pip install PyInput. You could do it that way. Or you could do it um, you know, pip install PyInput. You know, there's various ways to use pip and install these modules, but whatever. However you want to get it, just, just make sure it's installed ahead of time. Now we're going to define our main method that launches right when the program um, fires. So we're going to say, hey, if the underscore name underscore or double underscore is equal to, and then here, double underscore main, double underscore colon. So basically, hey, like I'm, I'm Python, I'm running this program. If the main method is about, is, you know, ready to fire, which would be this right here. Um, what do we want to do? And the thing we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, a listener is going to be an object we're creating, and that's going to be keyboard.listener. And then we have to pass in some parameters. And the only thing that we're really worried about is this on press parameter. So what this does is any time that this listener is turned on and I type a key on the keyboard, this on press portion, um, wherever it's directed to, that's where I'm going to send the event. So we're going to say on underscore press is equal to, and then we're going to write a method later called def, or actually uh, we're just going to call it key pressed. And what that's saying is, hey, every time a key is pressed, go ahead and pass that information to this key pressed um, function, which we'll get to. But right under that, um, now that's the main method, we created our object. We want to go ahead and start using the object. We're going to say listener dot start, uh, good old parentheses here. And then right under that, we're going to just say input. And that's basically telling Python like, hey, we're ready to start asking people for strings down in this terminal here. And listener.start starts the listener for this keyboard method, which means it'll start capturing these key events. All right, guys, now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and write our function. So we're going to say uh, define function, key pressed, and we're going to pass in a parameter of key. Now you might wonder, hey, how is it passing key if you know, we didn't have to say that right here. And that's because this on press thing automatically passes in key when it fires. So that is a parameter that's already given by default. We don't need to actually specify it. So in something useful right off the bat would just be to print it to ourselves what's actually happening. So we're going to print string key. And that's just going to, you know, guarantee that this uh, key right here is just going to convert it to a string. That way we can print it to the terminal. So now that we've printed out the, the key to ourselves, um, we need to now start writing all these key events to a text file because that would be a nice place to see them for later if we were an adversary or ourselves testing you know to see if it actually worked and a nice little way to do that and in python instead of like saying you know file is equal to this and then say file dot open or whatever you can actually just say with open and open is a, a method we can use to open files and create them and edit them and whatever but we're gonna say hey with open and in here, we're going to name our text file. So we're going to say key file dot text and then comma and then in single quotes a. And what this is saying is, hey, we're going to open up this file. If this file isn't already made, we're going to make one. 
And then uh, this A here tells it to append to the file. So um, we're going to just add to the file's existing content. We're not going to overwrite it or make you know anything new. We're just going to keep adding stuff into it. And now that that's out of the way, we could say as log key. So we're just kind of naming this right here as log key. That way we can reference it later. So inside this area here, we're going to say try. And in the try area, we're going to try to convert this key to a character to put into our file. So we're going to say char is equal to key.char. And then we're going to say log key.write. And we're going to go ahead and write it to the file. And the thing we want to write to the file is this char. Now, the reason this is in a try and accept block is because this doesn't always work flawlessly. And it actually fires errors sometimes with like, you know, things like spacebar and you know, other things. And instead of just making the program crash, we're just going to, you know, handle that exception and keep moving on. In the event that there was an exception, we're just going to print it to ourselves. Then we're just going to say, hey, there's an error getting the char. All right, guys, now this is literally all you need for this to work. And um, one thing to note before you go ahead and click that play button to launch the program is just like it should, um, there's, you know, some sort of antivirus program on your computer. A lot of them is, might be like Windows Defender. Um, I'm not sure what Mac or Linux has, but uh, Windows Defender comes installed on all Windows devices and it's, you know, it's an okay AV product. Most antivirus products should catch this keylogger activity. If they don't, that's actually really crappy. You don't want a keylogger living in the background and not knowing about it. So the only, only reason I'm bringing this up is because when you launch this, it will most likely get um, quarantined by your AV and you'll have to make an exception. So that's what happened to me when I was uh, writing this out and testing it yesterday. You know, I clicked play. There's a little pop up. It's like, hey, we found a virus on your computer. Click here and I can show you right now how to exclude that. So obviously this is for testing purposes. You don't want to do this long term, but you can go ahead and say um, virus and threat protection. We're going to open that up. Once you get that pop up in the corner of your screen, you can either click that right away or you can come into this window and it should say like, hey, threat found and you can click allow and the only reason mine looks a little different here is because I've already allowed it. So if you click allow threats, notice hack tool, Python logger, um, whatever, it thinks this is bad and it would be right. You don't want a key logger on your computer. Right here we have it and you'll notice um, I have it allowed and I can mark it as don't allow. But right now we're running it, so I wanted to allow it. All right, guys, we are ready to run our program. So let's go ahead and do that and make sure it works. So let's click play. Notice there was no quarantine event for our antivirus and down here, it is starting to do stuff. So if I start to type on my keyboard, it should print to the console and log it to our log file. And you'll notice in the top left here, there is no key file yet, but once I start typing, it'll make one. Go ahead and start typing here. Now you'll notice it printed out all the keys I used and it made this key file.txt. We click this, notice all the keys I've typed already have been logged, which is pretty cool. It logs like spaces and events too. Um, like I said, there's an error getting a char, but it does put this in a text file. Let's dive into a real world example where this could be dangerous for you. So if I was just some person and I didn't actually know this was on my computer, let's say I'm on Google. Um, let's say, I don't know, I looked up Facebook and maybe I you know, clicked Facebook and it brought me to Facebook site and then there was a login page. Now, if there is a login page and let's just say for example's sake, let's say this Google search bar right here was the username field for that login page. And maybe my username is, you know, Sean one. We can go ahead and click in the key file here and you'll notice among all this gibberish, I had typed in Facebook and then I typed in Sean one. So the person reading this file can already assume, hey, they went to Facebook and now they're typing in something that looks like a username. And then let's say that this was my password field. And then I had typed in, you know, password one with an exclamation mark. Now our key file not only has a username, but it also has the, our password that is for our Facebook account. So now this hacker or whoever is reading this file has our credentials literally stored in plain text. And that's why key loggers are really bad, potentially dangerous for whoever is using them and you know, has it installed on their machine without knowing. And that's why most AV products should uh, identify and quarantine these programs. But like I said, this is just a learning tutorial and you know, this is just a cool fun project to test out. So hopefully you guys learned something today and you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Comment down below any thoughts or suggestions for the next video. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.